scientists have seen living forms on the earth, and they're curious. They want to find out the origin of life. And they know that all plants, animals, and microorganisms are composed of cells. So therefore, they speculated that the first cell must have formed on primitive earth. And that cell divided and divided and formed more complex forms of life and mutated and mutated, and through survival of the fittest and natural selection, we end up with humans. Now, most scientists studying the origin of life realize that the original cell was very complex. It could not have occurred or assembled all at once. Therefore, they speculate that the formation of the first cell must have occurred in steps. And so the challenge for science is to determine what those steps were in the formation of that first cell. Now, there are three requirements for all living cells. All living cells have machines. These machines are proteins uh, called enzymes. And the mechanism of formation of these machines is the ribosome system. To run the machines, the machines have to have energy. And this is produced through an electron transport system that transports electrons to an enzyme, ATP synthase. And ATP synthase forms uh, adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. Uh, and ATP serves as the battery of the cells. And ATP supplies the energy to drive almost all chemical reactions in the cells. Now, a third uh, structure that's required by all cells is a cell membrane, a container that contains the components of the cells. Now, proteins are enzymes or proteins that are long chains made up of 20 different amino acids. Amino acids have this general structure. They have a carboxyl group. They have an amino group. And uh, this is the simplest amino acid, glycine. And other chemical groups are attached here at this hydrogen. And they form the different groups form the other 19 different amino acids. Now we have 20 different amino acids. We have polar, we have nonpolar, we have electrically charged, a basic and acidic. And you can see the different groups attached at that second carbon that gives you the uh, 20 different kinds of amino acids. Now functional amino acids have to have the structures that we showed. And if they were formed randomly, the great majority would not have the right structure. How are the functional amino acids selected from that mass of non-functional amino acids to produce functional proteins? Now this also applies to purines, pyrimidines, sugars, and fatty acids that are used to produce uh, nucleic acids, carbohydrates, and fats. Now in addition to having the proper structure, they have to have the correct sequence of amino acids in the uh, chain. Now this is an example of a very small, one of the smallest proteins. It only has 51 amino acids. On the average, only one functional molecule would be formed randomly for every 2.518 times 10 to the 66 molecules produced. If you had a thousand proteins with 51 amino acids formed every second, on the average, you'd only have one functional molecule formed every 7.14 times 10 to the 55th years. And the universe is only approximately 13.8 times 10 to the 9th uh, years. So during the life of the universe, you'd probably never have a, a small functional protein formed. Now, in addition to having the right sequence of amino acids, the proteins have to fold properly. Now, we've been talking about ATP synthase. This is the structure 
of the different proteins are color coded. You can see the the donuts that formed here and had to stack. The different colors had to have the right sequence. They had to fold just right so they could come together like a three-dimensional uh, puzzle. Now this is a little machine. ATP synthase is a little machine that produces ATP. This little machine, they estimate, spins a thousand times per second. Since all cells have this machine, evidently the first cell would have to have had this machine and it would have had to form and function in what some scientists call the superficies of primitive earth. The active site of the enzyme has to be on the surface of the enzyme. Now enzymes are produced by the ribosome system. This re requires a code and that code is DNA. One copy of the DNA double strand is called messenger RNA. That messenger RNA chain goes to the ribosome and it's read like a ticker tape as it passes through the ribosome. Transfer RNA molecules bring amino acids and add them in the right sequence as the protein chain forms. And so we have proteins. Some of those proteins are enzymes. Some of those enzymes produce purines, pyrimidines, sugars, and phosphate. And from these being produced, we have our nucleic acids. Other enzymes produce sugars, different sugars that are formed into carbohydrates. Different fatty acids are produced by enzymes to form the lipids. And so all living forms are made up of proteins, nucleic acids, carbohydrates, and lipids. And for this system to function, you have to have all of the molecules present. Now, the third structure that we mentioned is the membrane, the container for the components of the cell. This container is made up of phospholipids. On the left, you can see the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, the nitrogen, and phosphorus that is uh, used in the structure of this phospholipid. These legs are hydrophobic, and which means they hate water. And so in order to get away from the water, they form a, a bilipid membrane with the legs coming together. The head of the phospholipid is hydrophilic, loves water, and so these molecules will form a double membrane in water. To form a membrane large enough to serve as a container for the smallest bacterium, is going to take tens of thousands of these phospholipid molecules. The question is, where did these come from in primitive Earth? Now, the smallest bacterium that can be uh, grown in the laboratory is Mycoplasma genitalium. Therefore, we can use this bacterium as a model for what the first uh, cell, as it formed, might have been like. They found out that this bacterium has 385 essential genes. It's essential, it means if they knock out any one of these genes, this bacterium can't reproduce. And in bacteria, almost all of the genes are transcribed and translated into proteins. So that first cell, as it formed, would have to have probably close to 385 genes, which could produce 385 proteins, and you'd have to have the complete system as we uh, talked about it. Now the membrane that has formed here, in order for that cell to be functional, it has to select what it brings into the cell and what it releases from the cell. To do this, it has channels. An example of a channel is an ion channel. Uh, in this case, it brings in sodium, potassium, chlorine, and calcium, and can also take out to get the right balance inside and outside of the cell. Now, to take in nutrients, we have to have transport factors. And since uh, bacteria can't take in large molecules, 
may have to release hormones to break down large molecules, and then they have to have transport factors to transport the smaller breakdown products that they need that are essential for their growth into the cell. This applies to proteins, carbohydrates, fats, and nucleic acids. And then also we have to have transport factors to take the metabolic products out of the cell so that they don't accumulate. So that first cell would have to have had a large number of transport factors. It would have to have a large number of genes and all for the production of, of proteins, which would include the ribosomes and ATP synthase and, and other structures. Now, this, the source of essential components, the cells either have to have the genes for producing essential factors, or those factors have to be provided from the environment as nutrients. And this shows genes to proteins, to enzymes, to essential components, where they have to be provided as nutrients. Now, as we showed earlier, most science scientists realize how complex that original cell would have had to have been, that it couldn't have assembled all at once. They assume the formation must have occurred in steps. The challenge for the scientists is to determine what were these steps. So in review, that first cell would have had to produce DNA, RNA, messenger RNA, ribosomes. Ribosomes contain two subunits, a large and a small subunit, with over 50 proteins, all with the correct amino acid sequence, all folded so they could come together into those two subunits. And the amino acids have to be transported into the ribosome into the proteins, and this is a summary of what we've been talking about. And the question is, could you have DNA without the enzymes to form the building blocks for the nucleic acids? Could you have DNA without enzymes? Could you have enzymes without DNA? And could we have a, a membrane without this whole system to produce the fatty acids? produce that membrane. And so this points out the complexity that we have of trying to figure out, could you leave out any part of this? Could you produce it in steps and then have it all come together? It seems that it almost all have to come together at once in order to form that first cell.